you thought we forgot to start the lesson, but we did not. It's starting right now! In a math amazing, math -tastic world, one number is not always enough to represent one value. Sometimes we need two numbers. Sometimes we need fractions. If you don't think math is used in real life, then you have not met fractions. Think about it. Think about the number of places you see fractions. Maybe it was a recipe. One fourth cup flour. Maybe how far away your friend lives. One fourth mile. Maybe how tall you are. Four and one half feet. Maybe when school starts in one half hour. So what is a fraction? A fraction is just a value. It's written with one number as the numerator over a line over the bottom number, the denominator. The denominator tells us the number of equal parts a whole is divided into. The numerator is the number that tells us how many parts we're being asked about. Let's look at an example. Sometimes you see this kind of image, kind of a rectangle cut into some pieces. It may be called a fraction strip or a fraction bar. But you know, this would be much more fun if it was a candy bar, still separated into four equal parts. But I'm kind of hungry, so I'm going to eat some, or a little bit more. OK, that's good. Now we have this lovely model of a candy bar, and sometimes we're asked questions like, what fraction of the candy bar is left? Well, remember, our fraction is a numerator over a denominator. The denominator tells us the number of parts the whole is divided into. In this case, it's four pieces. Now, the question is, what fraction of the candy bar is left? How many pieces of the four pieces are left? Just one. One little piece is one-fourth of the candy bar. But what if that wasn't the question? What if the question was, what fraction of the candy bar was eaten? Well, that doesn't change the denominator. It's still four equal parts we started with. But I ate three. The question was, how many were eaten? Three. OK, here's a number line. Sometimes we see fractions with number lines. I can't turn this into food, so you're just going to have to use a number line. So sometimes you see a dot on the number line, and you'll be asked, what fraction does the dot represent? Well, remember, our fraction is a numerator and a denominator. The denominator tells us the number of equal parts our whole is divided into. Our whole is divided into three spaces, one, two, three spaces. That's your denominator. Now, we're being asked about the dot. The dot is two spaces over. One space, two space. So two-thirds is where the dot is. OK, now here's a circle. It represents a whole. It's cut into equal sized parts, and we're asked about the shaded parts. But you know I would like this circle better if it was a whole cake. Now we'll just chop that into equal parts. Well, now we have to change the question. OK, a whole cake was cut into equal sized pieces. One piece was eaten. How much cake is left? Well, we know we need a numerator and a denominator. The denominator is the number of parts we're cut into, which is one, two, three, four parts. The numerator is the question, how much cake is left? How many pieces? One piece, two piece, three piece. Three-fourths of the cake is left. OK. Now we have a fraction grid. It's one whole grid cut into equal sized parts, and we're talking about the shaded parts. But of course, this would be more fun as brownies. OK. So a pan of brownies was cut into equal sized pieces, and two of the pieces were eaten. And we want to know what fraction of the brownies are left in the pan. So we need our numerator and our denominator. The denominator is the number of equal sized pieces. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal sized pieces. The question is, how many are left in the pan? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six left in the pan. Six eighths of the brownies are left. 
Now that fractions are your friends, go forth and try some on your own.